Good morning. morning. Welcome to St. Petrie Lutheran Church this morning. It is the 18th Sunday after Pentecost. I'm Pastor Tim Malik. I'm glad you all are here, both in person as well as those joining us online. So, again, welcome. Let's begin our worship with our confession and forgiveness. Please stand if it's comfortable. Blessed be God, the one who forms us. Jesus, who bears the cross, the Spirit, who makes our joy complete. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others. For the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us. For the unjust demands we place on others and your creation, forgive us. For the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor, forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. We sing God is here, hymn number 526. The words will also be on the screen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We have special music offered by Joe Merkin. Still for the presence of the Lord is in this one is here. Come bow before him now with reverence and fear. In him no sin is found. We stand.
The first reading comes from Ezekiel 18, verses 1 through 4 and 25 through 32. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on the edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from the righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness, they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they have committed, they shall surely live, they shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn away from your transgressions, otherwise iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from all your transgressions that you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn, then, and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read Psalm 25, verses 1 through 9, responsively. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation, and you I have trusted all the day long. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You teach the lowly in justice and you lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. The second reading comes from the Philippians 2 verses 1 through 13. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look to not your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus who, though he is in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, but as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeliness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just of you has always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The word of the Lord.
Thank you, Owen, for reading, and thank you, Joe, for the special music. I'd like to invite forward the kids for a children's sermon. You can sit up here on the front step, on the front step, the chancel steps. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I need a couple of you to sit over here, too. OK, great. I'm going to divide the group into two. I want to try a little exercise here. Yeah, come on up. We'll wait till everyone gets up here. All right, can I split you guys right here? Can you scooch over that way a little bit? And you scooch over that way a little bit? OK, and I need you to, to um, do something for me, OK? So the next little bit, we're going to pretend that I'm looking for volunteers, OK? And you guys are going to be the yes group. So no matter what I say, no matter what I say, or what questions I ask, you always answer with saying yes, OK? But I don't want you to move. I want you to stay seated. So you always say yes, but you only stay seated, OK? And you guys, I'm going to eventually ask you for something. And no matter what I say, you say no. OK? And you can be like kind of grumpy when you say it, OK? Just say no. 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 OK? And you stay seated, too, until I tell you otherwise, all right? OK. So you're the yes group, you're the no group. All right. It's a good looking group of kids we got up here, right? You know what? It's so crowded in church today. I need some people to volunteer to stand up so that other people can sit down. Would you do that? Would you stand up during church today? Oh, no, you, you have to. St- All right, so remember what you're supposed to always do, no matter what I say, you say, yes, Yes. oh, you will. So you'll stand up the whole worship service. No, not now, though. So yeah, so you say yes, right? Say it nice and loud. Well, that's really good, so you're going to do that. You're going to stand up during worship. So I'm asking questions, you just keep saying Yes, but you're going to stay seated. All right, let's go over here to this group. Uh, I need some people to volunteer. Do you want to help me? No. 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 I need somebody to stand up so the others can sit down. Will you do that for me? No. Are you sure? (laughs) No. Well, my goodness, so you don't want to help me out at all. Okay, but now you can stand up, right? You guys stand up. Well, we're going to read a story in the Bible soon about uh, a farmer who had two sons. And the farmer said to the first son, I need you to go out in the fields and work. And he said, yep, I'm going to go. But then he doesn't go. Kind of like these people were saying yes, uh, but they didn't stand up. And then a second son, he said, I, you also go. And he said, no, I'm not going. But then he later changed his mind. He felt bad. He didn't want to disappoint his dad. So he he ended up going. So which one do you think did what his father asked? Right, the one that said no to begin with, but then they changed their mind, right? So you guys can sit down again. Thank you for helping me with that. So sometimes we don't do what we should, but maybe we'll change our mind about it. And there's a church word we use for that sometimes when we do something bad, and then we change our mind about it, and that's called repent. So if we do something bad or we sin, um, we need to repent. Not just feel sorry about it, but actually to change what we're doing so that we do better. And sometimes we sin because we don't do something that we should. And the big one there is loving people. So God asks us to love all people, and Jesus did that by showing that, showing how to love all people by curing them and feeding them and uh, helping them. So kids, let's fold our hands and repeat after me. The whole church can repeat after me a child's prayer. Dear God, thank you for teaching us about your love. Help us to do everything like Jesus by loving others. Amen.
Now, before you guys go, you can practice this with Tootsie Rolls. Yep, can you hand me that basket? I think it's there, thank you. All right, so here's how this works. You get a Tootsie Roll for yourself, but you need to take one or two to share with people that, it doesn't have to be who you're sitting with, but anyone you see between here and your seat. So take one for yourself and take a couple to share. And that's kind of like Tootsie Roll love. Okay. And then you can go back once you've got your Tootsie Rolls. Okay. Okay, make sure to share the extra ones now. So if you got a whole bunch, you got to share with a whole bunch of people. There you go. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, when Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man, had, a man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of, the, of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The gospel of our Lord. You. you may be seated. I want to deal a little bit with our second reading today. Um, first of all, if you uh, want to open that in your Bibles that are in your pews, Philippians 2, 1 through 13, you will notice that verses 6 through 11 are indented, like verses. And scholars believe that this was an early Christian hymn so that uh, Paul is probably quoting a hymn about Jesus. 
Something else I wanted to point out to you is that the very first verse says, if then there's any encouragement in Christ, the Greek would be better translated because instead of if. So then it would become because there is encouragement in Christ, because there is consolation from love and sharing of the spirit and compassion and sympathy, then do these things. The reason I wanted to focus on the second reading, though, is near the end of it, because this passage, if I don't you know, deal with it, I think can be troubling. Starting at verse 12, Therefore, my beloved, just as you has always, have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. I think we need to deal with that. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now keep in mind, Paul's not going back on everything else he said elsewhere about you are saved by grace through faith in Christ. That's still true. So what does this mean, work out your own salvation in fear and trembling? Especially given the rest of this, this reading. I think... This is the point. Yes, you are saved by grace through faith in Christ. What does that mean, that salvation? Does it mean eternal life after death? The answer is yes. And you can't earn that. That's a gift from God. So I want to start there at kind of the prime fact, the ultimate thing that we have in revelation to us through scripture and through Christ Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit working faith in you, the prime fact, the ultimate fact is that God loves you and that love translates into the fact that yes, you will have the gift of eternal life. But what Paul is saying, I think, is that salvation isn't just for the hereafter. It's not simply a get out of free jail card that we carry on us. Salvation is for here and now as well. And that heaven isn't just a, an ultimate, finally in time destination. That the kingdom of heaven, as Matthew's gospel likes to talk about, is breaking into our reality here. That we get glimpses of resurrection life here. And that we are a part of the work of the kingdom of heaven. And that that part does require our participation. It's asked of us. It's an outcome of being grafted into the body of Christ, the church on earth. It's a result of trusting in, it's another way to describe faith, trusting in the promises of God. The promises of God that say love is stronger than hate, that life is stronger than death, that God's future is better than the past we created or the future that we deserve. God's future. And it begins now. And part of how we enact that is to to be like Christ. There was an an old woman who lived a long time ago, 150 years ago or something, named Lucretia Mott. Does that name ring a bell to any of you history fans? Lucretia Mott, she was a Quaker Uh, And Quakers in those days had women preachers, and she was one of those women preachers. You wouldn't really call them a pastor. Um, She was famous for suffrage. She was at Seneca Falls. By that time, she was already an old woman. She was kind of behind the scenes with Elizabeth Canton Staddy and Susan B. Anthony and some of those folks that worked for women's right to vote. She's probably more famous for being an abolitionist, preaching and talking about against slavery. And her last name is the same as my mother's maiden name, Mott. And my grand, my, uh, uh, her dad, my maternal grandfather, was raised Quaker in uh, Cedar Rapids area. His parents were from Whittier and West Branch. And I always hoped that Lucretia Mott was a relative. But I don't think we can prove it. Uh, there's probably a lot of Motts that were Quaker. But one of my favorite stories about her, she was in a town invited there by the local abolitionist to preach against slavery. And she was in the town's uh, town hall. 
was a place to gather. And the local citizens got so enraged at her message, they were yelling at her and throwing things at her and trying to get her to leave the town hall. And she wouldn't do it. She kept preaching. So they set fire to their own town hall. And um, her friends had to drag her out or she would have been trapped in there because the place was starting to fall down. So um, anyway, that's a long introduction to one of her most famous sermons, which you can Google and read. It's called The Likeness of Christ. And it was her point, and I think it's, it comes out in our Philippians reading and our gospel readings. The way she said it, the Lucretia said it is, it's more important to be like Christ than to have the right notions about him. And she went on and expanded on, you know, all the churches that fight over their doctrine, you know, things about immaculate conception or virgin birth or, you know, who was Jesus? Just to remind us, we confess that he was fully human and fully divine. That's important. But she was saying all of that stuff is not as important as being like Christ. To love all people. To care for all people. To see in the face of every person you meet a loved child of God. And by doing that, then we're embodying the kingdom of heaven. And in a way, working to have heaven break into this reality, uh, helping God with that mission and that work in our world. So, I think there was an old movie, I've never seen it, but the title's famous, uh, Heaven Can Wait. I think what we're reading here is heaven can't wait. Death can wait. Death has been defeated, ultimately. But heaven can't wait. God's got work for us to do. Right? Loving, loving people. And, you know, the hardest thing for, my, for me in my whole life growing up was, I think when I was young, you know, told to love my enemies. To me, that meant the bullies that picked on me. Trying to work out in my mind how I'm supposed to love somebody. It was a mental exercise. I don't think that's what Jesus is asking us to do. Love is an action verb. Loving all people is um, helping out at uh, Loaves and Fishes, which we have an opportunity to do this coming Saturday. Uh, Loving all people is to help sew the hundreds of quilts that we send around the world um, or down to the the shelters in Ames and in Des Moines. Um, Loving all people is to go to the voting polls every election day and voting. Um, It's volunteering through your school board or through your local government bodies to try and make this a better world, whether it's about how we care for creation or how we care for the poorest among us, to be involved in this world through action that all speaks of God's love. For kids, that might mean um, trying to befriend the kids that get picked on, or the challenge for me was to befriend the kids that were bullies to me. There were three really bad bullies I can remember. One of them, I did that. <laughs> I don't think it was, it was as much his work as mine that we became friends. But um, As adults, we have people that are bullies at work that we deal with, or maybe in our social networks. Um, how do we try and rectify those situations where they're not victimizing people and yet we can also be safe in our encounters. Love is an action verb. You people who are parents or grandparents know that in your bones. Right? You can't just look at a baby and say, I love you. You actually have to put your hands on it and feed it and bathe it and care for it and hold it. That's what we need to do in all our relations. God's love active in grace and forgiveness and generosity. Um, and by doing that, the Holy Spirit will guide us, and we will, we will see heaven before we die. Let's sing our hymn of the day, which is, Oh, that the Lord would guide my ways, hymn number 772. The words will be on the screen.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We share the peace with one another. After the sharing of the peace, you may be seated, and our um, ushers will continue with the offering. They'll be passing the plates down every pew. We thank you for your support of the mission of Christ through St. Petri. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. We put our trust in you as we pray for the church. Give bishops, pastors, deacons, and teachers the gifts of wisdom and discernment. Be with them in bold truth and faithful witness. Merciful God, lead us in your truth as we pray for creation. Empower us to look to the interests of others as we make choices that impact the environment. Summons us, summons, summon us to be advocates for healthy waterways, habitats, and air. We also pray that you safeguard all the people who are working in their fields for harvest. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Lead us in justice as we pray for those in government, the military, and other positions of authority. We pray especially for President Joe Biden, Governor Kim Reynolds, and Mayor Mike Jensen. Give them humble and willing hearts looking to the needs of others. We pray also for our enemies. Merciful God, trusting your goodness, we pray for all caregivers and people who are sick or suffering in any way, especially Ordine, Mardell, Paul, Bev, Mark, Carl, Kim, Duane, Linda, Tom, Marilyn, Howard, Darlene, 
and all those that we now name before you in the silence of our hearts. Give them encouragement and consolation in your presence. Merciful God, teach us your paths as we pray for this congregation. Be at work in us and unite us in your love as we labor together for the sake of the gospel that all might see your kingdom, experience heaven on earth. Merciful God, we give thanks for all the saints who have died secure in the knowledge of salvation. Keep us fearless in our faith and certain of your resurrection. We also pray that you pour out your spirit of blessing on those celebrating an anniversary of their baptism this week, including Nicole, Ron, Tom, Nora, and Pua. Merciful God, remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these in the prayers of our heart, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the announcements. So our middle school group, the high, uh, Compass, meets on Wednesdays at 6. Axis meets every Sunday at 4. Uh, both those meet here at, at St. Petrie. Quilt making coming up on the 25th through the 27th. That's uh, not right anymore. It was already last week. The senior luncheon was already held. Okay. Well, thank you to everyone that came to that and all those that volunteered. Uh, this is current. Uh, we need volunteers for fishes, loaves and fishes this Saturday, the 7th. Uh, John's here in worship. Talk to him or Linda or myself. Um, I don't see Larry here, but um, we're looking for some helpers. Turkey dinner's coming up. Is that what you're going to talk about? Ed? Come on up, Ann, and tell us more about the turkey dinner. Good morning. Uh, so I'm not sure where September went, but it's already October, and we're two weeks away from the turkey supper. And I looked at the sign-up sheets, and they're getting full, but we could still use uh, more pies. And if you don't feel like you can make a pie but would like to contribute money, uh, there's a, you can sign up for that too, and then just put your money in the offering plate and designate it for that. So it's always a really fun event. Um, so anybody of any age... We are welcome to sign up and participate. Yeah, and we're uh, for confirmation students, you get service points for doing that too. So I think we'll give you more than one. Actually, we have a head usher now for December. So uh, that's been filled in. We're still looking for handy people to help out with a few things. There is the uh, YouTube channel. Are there any other announcements from you? We talked about loaves and fishes coming up, turkey suppers coming up. Oh, I have one. Did it make the bulletin about our, we're going to have a blessing of the animals a week from today at 3 o'clock p.m. out here on the lawn. So some of you may be familiar with um, the, the person St. Francis of Assisi. I think he died in 1222, a long time ago. But he was known for his love of animals. And so um, his feast day is October 4th. So usually the Sunday closest to that, some churches ob observe some kind of a blessing of the animals. So if you have an animal that plays well with others, or at least, at least on a leash or in a crate, it's safe among, around other animals, please come 3 o'clock a week from today out here, and we'll have a brief litany service and then... I'll come around and bless each animal individually. I'll put my hand on them if it's safe. If, and I'll bring gloves if I need to. No, I'm joking about that. But 
But here's the thing, not just those animals, but if you have an animal that you can't bring, like I know the Pattersons raise bee, or have bees, they have an apiary, so they produce honey. Maybe bring something that signifies that group of animals. So maybe it's a honey jar, maybe it's a frame from a hive. Um, likewise, if you have cattle or goats or sheep or bunnies, and then you can't bring your herd of cattle, um, bring maybe a halter or a milk bottle or something that represents that animal, and we'll bless that, right? Because this originally was intended to be blessing the flocks and the chickens and everything. So you can bring a picture, you can bring a stuffed animal. Maybe you've got a dog that doesn't do anything, you just bark and try to bite people, you know, bring, us, bring a photo of that. Um, so do you got the idea? Any questions, you can raise your hand right now. If maybe everyone's got the same question. If it's drizzling or just slightly damp, I think we'll still do it anyway. Um, if it's lightning or a bad storm, we'll probably postpone it. So, Otherwise, we'll have it out here on the south lawn. Our custodian right away asked if it was going to be indoors. I said no. <laughs> not be indoors. So we're safe there. I have an announcement about this okay. last hymn. I cannot sing it and play it at the same time. So I'm going to play the melody, just the melody, all the way through once, and then we will start at the beginning, okay? Okay, well, we got to do the blessing first, and then Joe's going to play it through for us so that we can learn it. And then, oh, I should remind everybody, Joe, too, the, uh, the first two lines are repeated, then you repeat the next four lines. That's repeated once, too. There's repeats at the end of both those. Okay, the blessing. Stand if it's comfortable for you. The God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the Spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. We are disciples of Jesus Christ, called to grow in Christ and to invite all to follow him. Go in peace. God is at work in you.